Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to Venn diagrams. They're excellent ways of displaying information like you see here. And it's going to be useful when it comes to working with probability as well. So I'll run through this example and then I've got another example in this video which I would encourage you to have a go at. So we've got here 20 people were asked whether they liked apples or bananas and here are their responses. 15 liked apples, 8 liked bananas and 5 liked both. And to display this in what we call a Venn diagram we start by drawing a container, a rectangle like this. And this rectangle is called the universal set. And we tend to label this with, say, the letter U for the universal set. Although I have seen other letters used, S for instance, for sample space. Now, we've got to put other containers, other sets within this universal set for those that liked apples and those that liked bananas. And you can draw any shape you like within the universal set. So if I have this as being the container, the set of those that like apples, I'll label it with the capital letter A for apples. And then we'll have an overlapping set for those that like bananas. The overlap will be those people that like both apples and bananas. And this section here will be for those that like apples only. This section will be for those that like bananas only. So I can start to fill this in. I like to put the number in the universal set up here in brackets. So we've got 20 people there. And I've got 15 that liked apples, so that's all the people in this set, so I could put 15 there, and 8 that liked bananas, so I can put 8 against that B there. Now I know that 5 liked both, so I can actually fill in this region in here. This region represents those that like both apples and bananas, so we'll put 5 there. And so that leaves me with 15 take away 5, 10 people liking just apples or apples only. And for this region here, it'll be eight take away five. So that's going to leave me with three people that liked just bananas. So now I've accounted for a total of 10 plus five plus three people. In other words, 18 people. So that leaves me with two from the 20 here that do not like apples or bananas and we can put them anywhere on the outside here so let's just put them in that space there so what we have here is referred to as a venn diagram and with venn diagrams where we've split the information up we're going to be asked generally questions similar to these for instance number one how many liked apples only well that's just seen from this region here. It's 10. So we've got 10 people then liking just apples only. Number two, how many like just one type of fruit? Well that's got to be apples only and bananas only. 10 plus 3. In other words 13. And then finally for three, how many liked apples or bananas or both? Well that's got to be the 10 here the 5 and the 3, a total of 18. So we've got 18 there. Now as I said earlier, I've got an example that I would encourage you to have a go at, very similar to this, but just give you a little bit more further practice. And here it is. We've got 28 people who asked what they had for breakfast and here are their responses. Four people had just fruit, 20 had cereal or fruit or both, six had both cereal and fruit, and we've got to represent this information then in a Venn diagram and go on to answer these questions here. So what would the Venn diagram look like? Well, as before, it's going to be a rectangle for the universal set and the two sets that represent people who had, let's say, fruit and cereal. So I need to label this up 
we'll take u then to be the universal set. We'll have this as the set of people who had fruit and this one as the set of people that had cereal, which we'll label C. And let's put some numbers in this. For the universal set, there's 28 people, so I'll put 28 there. We know that four people had just fruit, so I don't know how many in total had fruit, so I can't put four against the F here. But I can put the four immediately in this section here, as four people just had the fruit. And then we've got 20 had cereal or fruit or both. That's the total of this region here, this region and this region. So I've already got four from the 20, so that leaves me with 16 people must have had cereal. So I'll put 16 here. I don't know how that 16 spread across these two regions. Until I read the next statement, which is six had both cereal and fruit. So I now know that six must go in the overlap here to represent those that had cereal and fruit. And now that leaves me with 16 takeaway six, 10 that had cereal only or just cereal. I mustn't forget this outer region here for those that didn't have fruit or cereal. So we've got a total of 4, 6 and 10, a total of 20. So that leaves me with 28 minus 20, 8 that didn't have fruit or cereal. So now I'm in a position then to answer these three questions here. How many had fruit? Well, that's going to be the total of the four and the six. So we'll put that in there now that we know it as being 10. So we've got 10 then. How many had cereal only? Well, that's the 10 here. So we've got another 10 there. And for three, how many did not have fruit or cereal? Well, that's got to be the eight out here. So hopefully you can see now how helpful Venn diagrams are in sorting out information like this. So we'll be using this, as I said earlier, in questions based on probability. Now in my next video, what I'll be looking at is harder problems based on two sets, as you see here, but they're going to be solved algebraically. We're going to need to form an equation to find out values in certain regions. So I definitely encourage you to have a look at that one. But for now, I hope that's been of some value to you.